Hello friends, I'm Dr. Rohit Shetty. I'm an ophthalmologist at Narayanetralaya, Bangalore. I'm going to speak to you through this medium about heart attack. The first thing which comes to your mind is why an ophthalmologist is speaking about heart attacks. So I'm speaking to you not as an ophthalmologist or a cardiac surgeon or a specialist. I'm just speaking to you as a common man. The whole idea here which we try to enact through actors and also through some animated physiological graphs is to create an awareness of what you can do when you're waiting, what you can do when you're shifting a person in your car, what you can do if it happens in an aeroplane or a train or a bus before you reach the hospital. And this is the need of the hour, friends. So I'm speaking to you as a common man and my team will help you to understand and create a, a small module for you to practice at home if you ever get a chance. God forbid it, but if you get a chance, you're, you're ready. Thank you. We grew up thinking of cardiac deaths as being common amongst the elderly. Does that still hold true? Our fast-paced city lives, our obsession with fast food and our stressful lifestyles have all perpetuated a rising trend in the incidence of sudden cardiac deaths amongst the young, especially in the past decade in our country. So are there any warning signs, a red flag that should set off alarm bells in your head? Most commonly, the symptoms of cardiac arrest begin minutes to hours before the event. Sudden difficulty in breathing, especially during activities that did not cause the same symptoms earlier. Left-sided chest pain that is constricting, that is, it feels like a heavy weight over the chest. This pain is not decreased by rest. Palpitations or awareness of the heartbeat. And sweating with uneasiness. Now what do you do? First and foremost, remain calm and Try to allay the patient's anxiety. Anxiety can often worsen the condition. Call the nearest person available for help. Always contact your nearest hospital. It is important to hand this over to medical experts. Put the victim in a recovery position. Head tilted to keep the mouth open hand supporting the head and knees to stop the body from rolling onto the stomach. But what if an ambulance isn't immediately available? Do you wait or do you initiate the transport yourself? And more importantly, what precautions could you take to ensure safe transport? It is always wiser to opt for the fastest mode of travel in case an ambulance isn't immediately available if the patient is breathing, responsive or has a pulse. CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation is not indicated in such a situation. Do not administer medication without the prescription of a registered physician. Keep the victim's legs raised to help blood circulation towards the heart. Keep the victim's head tilted back to ensure an open airway. In case you're not the family, inform the patient's family members if they are not present. Remember, instead of relying on a known family physician who may be located further away, always opt for the hospital that is nearest to you at the time. Now what do you do in a suspected cardiac arrest? If the person has not collapsed in front of you and you come across someone lying on the ground, it is important to ensure that the site is safe. Tap forcefully on the person's shoulders or chest and ask, are you okay? in a loud voice. Ensure that the airway is clear. If there is any foreign material obstructing the airway, please remove it. Always activate the emergency medical services. Determine if the patient is breathing by assessing the chest movements from the head end of the person. The patient's head is positioned with an upward head tilt and jaw thrust as shown. Assess the central pulse or the carotid pulse in the neck. If there is no recordable pulse, 
you may begin chest compressions. Place your dominant hand on the chest at the junction of the middle two-third and the lower one-third of the chest, that is, the ziphy sternum in the center. Begin chest compressions. Ensure that your fingers are interlocked and your elbows straight with no bending. 30 compressions are given at the rate of 100 to 120 per minute, with each compression being 5 to 6 centimeters deep. How does this help? The chest compressions activate the cardiac pump and force blood out of the cardiac chambers. They also activate the thoracic pump. Build up of positive pressure creates cardiac output and expels air. Negative pressure creates a vacuum which helps in filling the heart, pulling air in and allowing coronary artery blood flow. Follow a pattern of 30 is to 2, 30 compressions followed by 2 breaths. Ensure that you pinch the nose and make a tight connection with the patient's mouth while administering the breaths. A rise and fall of the chest indicates that the breath has been correctly administered. Make sure that you alternate with another rescuer to avoid fatigue. If you are an untrained rescuer, in a single rescuer situation, you may perform hands-only CPR, that is, continue compressions without delivering breaths. CPR may be exhausting, but it is crucial to continue this till the arrival of the emergency medical services. Once the team arrives, your job is effectively done. Now, you can take a step back with the conviction of having done your best to step into your role as a saviour. Now, you can trust modern medicine to perform its duty. You can assure your loved one that now, your faith shall heal you.